Hey, 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 guys. Yep. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm running a bit late there, but yeah. I was like, yeah, that's like, that's like one minute to eight. Ah, oh, it's still not ready. I haven't got my phone plugged in, but now, yeah, I have my phone plugged in now. So yeah, guys, how is it going? How has your week been? So you just give me one second so I can pop out this wee chat here because, as I say, I've been running around last minute. So let's get this in here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Pop it, see live chat. Pop it the chat. So yeah, guys, how is it going? How has your week been? Hopefully it's been as cloudy as my week. Get this live chat in here. Yeah. Tell me, can you hear me? Because as far as I'm aware, I can hear me. <laughs> I don't know whether I am having a bit of trouble in regards to talk and all, but for some reason, I'm sitting here and I don't have anyone chatting. Oh, Jim. Right, yeah, so this is the weekly show where, um, well, until recently it was like two people, but now it's down to one person. And essentially we just sit around, have a wee chat, and uh, talk about a bit of fake news, because this week I'm going to talk about a wee bit of fake news in regards to what's been happening recently in regards with uh, the YouTube. So yeah, um, there we go, there's a the chat, there we go. Hi, how's it going guys, yeah. It all sounds really good, yep, thanks. So yeah guys, um, as I say, this is the weekly show where we just sit around, we have a week chat, and essentially, uh, if there's any news that's been of interest to me, I'll just have a wee chat about it. Um, and there has been a good, decent amount of interesting news I just want I'm really interested in kind of talking about this week and you know just if it, if you want to give your own opinions on it go ahead but yeah we'll start off with what am I vaping on this week uh, first thing I'm using today is the iJoy Avenger kit on top of that using the VCMT2 in blue and not using a bit of Homeboy e-liquids, uh, the Cosmic Coffee, so that is a Caramel Latte and Ice. We are also using uh, the Smuck My Kit on there using a bit of uh, Wick Liquors Boulevard. Uh, on top of that, the Mad Dog V2, on top of the Enigin Lift, which is it's a pretty interesting, um, pretty interesting deck and a pretty interesting base. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But yeah, um, it's, it's a bit iffy, you know, I, I just... Wanted to get the Mad Dog, and for some reason they had it with the lifting top, so I thought, right, okay, I'll get it with the lift and see what the lift is like on it. Uh, yeah, so, the Spot Mag on top of that, the Indigen Lift, and the Mad Dog V2 from Desired Designs. Uh, and I'm also using my lovely Pride and Joy, that I have just put a video out on last night. The uh, Council of Vapor DTK kit the squawker on top of that using a bit of uh yeah the wick liquor as well i just got i just got quite lazy this week as i said yeah i'll put the wick liquor in again um on top of that the recurve rda from wotofo and mike fips so hey guys what are you all fipping on today well, I sit here and just do a couple of clouds. Mm. 
so yeah everything seems to be running fine at the minute we have I think we have like five people in the chat at the minute. Sixteen people! Oh, I, I went up really, I went up really fast from five people to sixteen people. Yeah, that's all here. What you are vaping on today? Uh, while you're doing that, I will prepare for the first bit of news that I want to have a wee chat about. Uh, essentially, we're gonna start off with the interesting items that I found this week and then we'll move on to the news uh, as such so let's prepare with the first item uh, that we that I really want to have a look at today so we'll start off with this wee bad boy here so pop this into place we shall pop this screen down here I will have us in the place. So yeah, um, let's have a look at this chat here. Yeah, guys. So if you are missing a bit of chat, make sure that you uh, go on to live chat up the topper. Uh, YouTube have a tendency to put it automatically on the top chat. So from time to time. Uh, if I'm talking about something and you don't see it in the chat most likely it's because it's on the live chat and isn't on the top chat so yeah make sure up at the top of the chat there you have a wee arrow that says top chat click that make sure it goes on to live chat and you can catch up with the rest of the comments that are in the show but yeah we'll start off with having a look at the first uh, item that I'm, I'm pretty interested in so it does look like a very interesting uh, device and it's from my favourite company in the world, iJoy. So yes, we are having a look at the iJoy Elite Mini Kit. So if you can see the picture there, essentially it is it's very interesting, it's like a very small um, kind of single battery, the single 2700, 2700 mod. Um, but the there, if we can have a look at the Dakar, you can see on the far right, it is a standard stock coil tank. Then as you go along, it goes from uh, stock coil to RTA to RDA and then that one at the far right end there or if you're looking at it the other way it would be the one with the black top and top there that is a pod system so yeah essentially I enjoy are bringing out a single battery mode which uh, has three different options on top you have your standard stock coil tank you have your rebuildable tank uh so your rebuildable rta and your rebuildable rda and you have a pod system so yeah that is pretty pretty interesting just from the looks of it so yeah um yeah back they do look really really nice so that it looks really interesting uh essentially that's just the the only color i've seen the kind of black and red one there uh, just from the pictures, but uh, what I'll do is I'll go onto the website here. You can see there's different colors of it on the website. So you have the black and black, you have the red and black, you have a purple and black, and you have a yellow and black. Uh, you have that kind of turquoisey blue black, uh, you have your standard silver and black, and the stainless steel and black. Uh, you have your gunmetal black as well. A good amount of colours, I'm not really going to go through all of them. Uh, but you have you have a Bunny special and you have a Gary special in it. Um, for the looks of things, that Gary special doesn't actually look particularly bad there. Um, so, what have we got? Mini uh, Gary special. 
<coughs> and we'll go up and we'll have a look at the purple one here just so we can throw this in the chat just to make uh, everyone drool over these so many funny special so there we have we have them saved onto the device or saved onto the computer here sorry so what we'll do is we will remove that image to oh, wait, oh, image so yeah uh, what are your thoughts on this device guys so while I get ready to change the uh, the image here Take it a bit longer than usual, but hold on, I'll get this here. Remove that. We'll add in the we'll add in the bunny special. So the bunny special is gonna be start off with the bunny special here. So as you can see there. You have the purple uh, black color, the bunny special. It does look particularly nice in my opinion. So the Daffy Daffy one of, of, that I would go for if I was the bat, you know. But that's the bunny special there. And we also have the Gary special. So we'll pop this out of the way. And we will pop in a picture of the Gary special. So, Gary special there, up there, and right there, and we'll transition. So that is the Gary special mod. As you can see, it is pretty, pretty nice looking mod there. So there's, a, there's no problems with it at all, and that I have no complaints with it. It looks pretty, pretty nice. So, uh, I'll look back at the chat here while I was doing that. Um, yeah, we'll have a look back at the chat while, while I missed here. So, right, okay, that's beat, blah, 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 blah. You see, that's a, is it 80% burns? I haven't seen, I haven't seen that news, D, D, DSV, sorry, DSV said. Uh, I haven't seen that news, um... I kind of stick, stay away from that news because essentially most of the time you can tell just by reading the news that it is it's going to be fake you know that it's not going to be a true story it's probably just going to be something that's rubbish stuff uh, to try to protect the real back they did something stupid and um, they're trying to blame it on batteries or blame it on the manufacturer defects and all, but it's less that and it's more their case of not looking after their batteries or um, not um, not being, how can I say it, yeah, yeah, so not being careful with their batteries or <clears throat> not knowing their ohms law, because essentially the whole burns thing it all falls down to one or two things. Mistreat, mistreatment of batteries or uh, always being too low on the device you know you may the always being too low in the RDA or TA or, or, or on top of the device especially when it comes to a Mac mode uh, yeah you also have clone Mac modes as well as uh, Keeper Cloudy was talking about you know so that he was you have the clone Mac mod, the clone Mac mods you don't understand. Sometimes you don't even know where they're coming from, what material they're using. They may say it'd be a stainless steel, but maybe something like a silver or something like that, you know. Or, or, sorry, they may say it may be a silver or a kind of chrome or something like that, you know. Uh, and it may be a material that's very cheap and is probably very dangerous uh, to use, especially when it comes to electricity. Yeah guys, that is the Gary special, you had a look at the Bunny special, 
Uh, while we're here, we just post up both pictures here. So we'll move this uh, down for uh, Red, who just came in. Hopefully you like your purple colors because this is going to be very, very tempting for you. So we'll pop this down. Pop this down in the place. Pop this up here. So yeah, transition. There we go. So that, as you saw there, and, and you've seen her there, but this is for Red, who who has just come in. You have the rainbow one, which is up around here, up around here at the top here. Then you have the purple underneath, which is particularly is my favorite, but it's a favorite of everyone. Yeah, the, purp the purple one is that does look really really nice. But yeah, we shall give a quick bit of information on the iJoy uh, Mini. So the iJoy Elite Mini Kit. Uh, essentially what they're saying is the evolution of the iJoy or the TA Box Mini platform. So it's capable of firing up to 60 watts with... Uh, oh, sorry. It's not a single battery. It's a built-in battery. I apologize for that. Yeah. Built-in 2200 milliamp LiPo uh, battery in the actual device. Uh, they're saying it's sleek, it's portable, new compact, all one, which integrates three different vape styles into one chassis. So, included in the kit, you have the RDTA Mini Mod, you have your Captain Elite sub ohm tank and your RTA tank. You also have an iJoy JMP pod adapter which extends the ultimate flexibility into one device, is, that's what they're saying there. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. Uh, it says paired with the mini kit. Uh, yeah, paired with the, the mini kit is the iJoy Elite sub ohm and RTA tank. Uh, so, it's basically one tank where you can put in your sub ohm coils and you can just put in a deck to build on it. You know a lot like uh, what they had with the the uh, the old iJoy RDTA box where you had a, a set um a set pre rack coil that came in there and then you have the base with the uh, I believe they were using the velocity deck on it so essentially that's what's going to be in the box here and then you'll have uh, a wee adapter where you can put your pod into. So the JMP pod, what they're talking about is it says it allows you to use the pod uh, on the device. It's a, it's compatible with uh, a, a couple of pods. That's why they call it the JMP pod because it's compatible with the dual and it's compatible with the fix pods. But uh, that's something you know that uh, that's why they call it the JMP pod because essentially. You can compare, you can work with the M2 ones. Um, so with the adapter, you can use the pods on the mod with a long, the long battery life. So you get um, a good amount of battery life in it rather than sticking with the 900 milliamp, but what you get from most pod systems and all. Uh, plus, you also have the option of adjusting the wattage you log it. So say you find. Uh, with some of the pod systems, like 18 milligrams or something, you find that it's very smooth. You can always bump up a wide to swap bit and see if it gives you more of a kick in the back of your throat, which I do actually like to do that. I do actually like the sounds of, because it'll be something that'll be very interesting to try, you know, adjusting the wattage of the pod system rather than just having a set wattage. So, uh, quick bit of information on it. Uh, comes, uh, in the TBD rules, it will come as a 2 mil tank. Uh, outside, it will come as a 3 mil tank. The uh, dimensions on it is 22.5 by 41 or 46.1 millimeters. Uh, has a sliding top fill for the the tank. 3 in 1 kit, so cell bone, your RTA, and your port system. It comes with the uh, adapter, which is compatible with 
the different pods as what I just talked about there. Uh, they're saying it does cloudy, vapor, and optimal flavor recreation. Has a gold plated deck, an adjustable bottom airflow, compact and portable. So yeah, in there in the box, as I say, you get the iJoy box mod, you get the Sublim tank and the RTA tank. You get two coils, so they call them elite coils. Uh, 0.25 ohms from 30 to 60 watts. Uh, with one of them will come pre-installed in the tank. You'll have your JMP pod adapter. You'll have one JMP pod. You'll have a replacement glass, a tool pack, USB charge cable, your user manual, and your warranty card all in the actual uh, box itself. So you get a decent amount of stuff in the box. So you have a really decent amount of stuff in the box, which really does put a bit of interest into the actual device itself. I just like the whole shape of it because the shape of it looks a lot like um, like the RDTA box mini in a way. So or like a mixture between the R the RDTA mini or uh, what's the other iJoy one? It's the one with the slide back door off. I try, try remember what it was. Tell you what, I'll cover my head later on, but it does look a hell of a lot like the. Um, the RDTA box to me. So that's that's not even the side door side. It would, it would be the the captain mode. It looks a lot like a mixture between the captain mode and the RDTA box, in my opinion. But yeah, looks pretty pretty nice. Um, so what's your thoughts on it? Because. As I say, I like the look of the face. It looks like it's going to be a pretty good, decent starter mod. Internal battery as well, so you're not having to worry about going out and buying separate batteries and all. Just charge it through your micro USB port. But the one thing that really interests me in that is the actual... It's the top itself. Just the different variations as you can put on to it you're not stuck with a standard sub ohm tank uh and i did say it earlier but i'll just say it again the the whole um kind of option in regards to putting pods on and adjusting the whites and the pods but hey chunk how's it going so so while you're doing that we'll have a quick chat or while you're if you are typing with them We'll have a quick look back on the chat and see if there's anything that I have missed in the chat. So, uh, Smurf, if you are going to do a GoFundMe page to buy Gary every rainbow mod in the market, put the, uh, if we are able to put the link, no you're not able to put the link in. Send me the link and I'll put the link up on the chat there so we can, everyone can go to the GoFundMe page and add to the wee fund so we can uh, get Gary every single rainbow mod uh, on the in the market. Yeah. Um, who else have I missed? Who came in recently? So we had Red Fox who came in. Uh, we had Andy, blah, 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 Smurf. So yeah, if anyone else wants to have a wee chat, and there, don't be afraid to have a wee chat. I'm quite a nice guy. To just uh, I do talk a lot. I may put your head in every once in a while, but essentially, you know, you can have a wee chat and you can join in the chat. So yeah, if you also want to give a wee thumbs underneath the video there. Uh, give a wee thumbs up if you if you are new to the actual channel give a wee subscribe you know catch up on the shows it's really good about the shows on on the actual network but yeah what what am i faping on uh i'll go back through what i'm faping on again just for red fox um so i enjoy avenger uh mod on top of that using the vcmt2 in that using a bit of own boy e-liquids uh it's a Caramel Latte on Ice, so that's their Cosmic Coffee. Uh, as you can see there, I'm using the Smock Mag Kit. On top of that, using the 
Mad Dog V2 from the Sad uh, Designs. Uh, underneath that is the Enigin Lift system, which uh, is pretty interesting. It's, most of the time it works. You get the odd dry hit every once in a while. Uh, I'm also using the Council of Vapor DTK kit. Uh, on top of that, using the Recurve RDA. And that, uh, using a bit of Wick Liquor Boulevard Shattered. I'm also using the, the Boulevard Shattered in this as well. But yeah, um, that's all I'm vaping on today. But yeah, um, I'm really surprised with Council of Vapor. In regards to this mod, there is a lack of lack of advertising on the actual device itself. It's only in the last day or two that they have actually started advertising for the DTK kit. But the DTK kit has been it's been on the run or it's been around for a good couple of months. And it's it's very interesting that they haven't done any any uh advertising on it so that i i had a look back on youtube to see if there was any advertising i looked back on the council vapor website on their instagram and all as well their twitter and all and the only the only uh hint to it was a couple of months ago the fake expo that they even showed the actual um the face in the video they just kind of put it into the tags so anyone who kind of uh search for it, that fake expo thing from council of vapor would have came up uh but yeah they've only started advertising in the last couple of days so i can understand what you mean by they're shockingly good at times which they are really shockingly good that is a shockingly good device but when it comes to their uh are advertising uh, of new devices they do leave it a, a bit late I mean really late in this purpose uh, hell at the time of doing the actual review the only reference to the actual device and I, I only did the review yesterday I only posted up last night the only reference to the device was a video on YouTube which is going back a couple of months and a couple of references in the last day or two on the Council of Vapor uh, Instagram page, on the Twitter page, and only one supplier who is doing it, and it is uh, Premier e in the UK. They're the only people who I've seen who are actually selling it, and they're actually selling it at a pretty decent price. Uh, but, you know, as I say, very shocking on the timing of advertising, but it's a pretty good device. You can just see by the screen there, if I can get the screen to get the screen to show up or, or whether I have to kind of auto zoom out there. That does not look like a Council of Vapor device to me. As I said, if I was walking down the street and I saw someone walking down with this, I wouldn't expect that to be a Council of Vapor device because a Council of Vapor device it's known for being kind of black and white on the screen or kind of black and grey on the screen. Pretty basic kind of uh, menu. Well, the Council of Vapor ones I have seen are being pretty basic on the uh, the menu for it. Um, but that, they've actually made that colour screen and they've made it a lot smaller. I really do think that is the smallest Dual 650 squawker on the market. I'm not going to say... Dual 650 mod, I'm going to say Dual 650 squawker on the market because it's a hell of a lot smaller than the G box and the uh, Capo 216. So that those things are just massive. They probably, they, of course, they made it massive to get the board in, you know, get as many features in as they can and all that, make it uh, compatible with bigger batteries and all. But you don't need to go crazy on it. You just need a standard Dual 18650 uh, well, standard Dual 18650 mod. It's pretty sturdy in the hand. There's it's, it's no problems with it at all. It does give quite a kick as well, especially when you pop it up past 
120, 130. Essentially, uh, in that, I'm just using a, a, just a single five wrap um, staggered staple Clapton coil. Uh, yeah, it's coming in at 0.34 ohms. So it's, it's given quite a kick. Yeah, think about it. Right, dual 18650 squawker mod. And I'll show you. It's a dual 18650 squawker mod. Dual 18650. Two 18650s on it. It's a, basically around about the same size as an 18650 squawker battery itself. So pop this here. Battery, 18650. Essentially, it goes up to the fire button there, and above that, you have your pin and you know, all your board and all. Because you know, the boards at the front there, you have your plate at the top there uh, to make sure that you know, if you do bind them all, it's not going to go crazy on you. But yeah, it's essentially it's just, it's the size of an 18650 battery but the kick you get from it is really good unfortunately it only comes in one color at the minute which is the yellow and black uh, bumblebee colors but I have no problems with it at all yellow and black it's, uh, it's looks pretty nice you know uh, it may show up a couple of scrapes or a couple of dirt marks over time and all, of course. It's not going to be uh, friendly for Mr. Summerfield here because he likes, he likes stuff that he can't scratch and all that. So it may well be something that he want to get, you know, because essentially it's anodized, kind of painted yellow. But, uh, yeah, I have no problems with the colour at all. I would like to see that they've brought out different colours rather than sticking with the kind of uh, bumblebee yellow and black colour, but... Yeah, you... You like the scratcher mods. So that's the only thing that uh, you have a problem with. Uh, why, why is Miss Gilly Bops swearing about iJoy? What has I Joy done this time? So I'll we'll transition back to the screen now. What has I Joy done to you this time, Daily Buffs? So hopefully it's not, it's nothing bad. So and don't tell me it's because of the voice control on the mod. Well, that picture I had up there, that doesn't have voice control on it. It's an internal 2200 milliamp bar, uh, 60 watt mod. Uh, I'll, I'll put the link up for you again just to show you there. But it's, it's pretty interesting because essentially it doesn't come straight with a standard sub ohm tank. It comes with a different options. It comes with a sub ohm tank and an RTA. And then you also have an adapter where you can put your pods on. So it'll work with the Phoenix pods. It'll work with the particular pods that are getting people's delayed channels deleted at the moment. But essentially it's an adapter that will work with it. They're calling it the JMP uh, adapter for your pods. But yeah, it's, it, it's pretty nice. You know, I have no problems with it. And the good thing is it doesn't have voice control in it, so it'll work fine for you. So it'll work fine for me as well. So I'd say it might be something that um, that Fick would probably like, you know, because he's he's all into his starter mods and all that, you know. Uh, perhaps if they said about the right color, he'll probably be more interested in it. But it's an internal battery mod and. Well, uh, I enjoy don't have a lot of internal battery mods out, so that's what put a bit of interest in me because, because uh, essentially, if you see the internal battery mod, they're apart from e Leaf, they are very rare to see. You have 
you have Joy Tech who have a couple of them. Uh, you have Tess the Sig who do a couple of them as well. But apart from E Leaf, you don't see I Joy doing a lot of internal battery mods, so it is pretty pretty nice. So yeah, take a look at that linker and essentially if you do like it, you know, it might be something of interest. But yeah, we talked enough timer about the iJoy uh, mini mod. I keep forgetting the name of it. So yeah, the iJoy Elite mini mod. We'll move on to uh, the next one, which is pretty interesting in my opinion. So that it's we're moving from a deface to a R D A this time. So we'll pop this into the chat here and. We will prepare for it. So let's have a look at the Joy Tech Riff RDA. So there we go. That is essentially the base for the iJoy Riff RDTA or RD. Sorry, not RDTA. RDA. So so uh, essentially. It's a lot like, you know, people have been kind of complaining about that uh, that ceramic chip one, you know, where you had to kind of bend the cotton over the top of it. Essentially, uh, it's the same for, essentially it's slightly different to that. So, it's, so rather than having the cotton going over the top, the cotton's going in between the two plates. So, so if I can get a decent picture of it to show you, uh, so yeah, there we go, uh, try and get a decent picture before you to show you. Uh, hold on, give me one second here. I thought I had a decent picture, but I didn't have a decent picture. So the, uh, where are we, Facebook, yeah, that's it. I'm telling you where, where I found this stuff, <laughs> uh, yeah, I found this on Facebook, it was pretty interesting, um, yeah, so, we'll see if this photo, free to, to uh, we'll go back in the chat here, uh, do, 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 do. we'll add an image, We'll go here, we'll go three, two, two. Okay. So we'll remove this image. You just this into place here. And yeah, so that essentially this is what the what's gonna look like when you have the cotton in the deck. So as you can see the cotton is just going through the center of the two plates itself. Uh, so it looks like a pretty, pretty interesting deck on it. So the, they are saying that the device is using, it's like molecule kind of based. So yeah, they're using uh, RFC heater, which is made in the USA. Uh, they said it's safely tested by an independent laboratory in the USA. So they're claiming at the minute that it is the safest heating material. Uh, you get a million puffs out of it before you have to change it. It's self-changing and it's a coilless. So let's uh, see if this photo here. I'll quickly show you the claims that they're putting into it. So they are, because they are putting some, they're putting some very interesting claims onto it. So in my opinion, I don't know whether these are actually going to hold up or not, but they're putting a, an interesting claim on it. So let's move this in the way. Transition there. So yeah, that's the claims that they're putting on to it. As you can see, they're, they're saying that uh, essentially it's molecule hidden, uh, safest hidden material on the market. 
Uh, you get a million puffs out of it. Uh, it's self clean and it's, it's coilless, so there's no coils in it. But yeah, what is your opinion on this? Because essentially, I I like the look of it. It's a pretty interesting concept. But it's actually going to hold up to the claims they're putting on it. Uh, because you seen before you had the kind of ceramic kind of base to it. You know that ceramic one where they were saying that yeah, it's self clean and all that. You just pop the cotton over the top and, you know, into the. Well, pop the cotton over the top and then pop the wee secure and to hold it into place. Uh, they're saying in this one there's no secure. Essentially, all you're doing is you're sliding the cotton between the two plates. So you are. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty interesting decor to use on this. Plus, it, it, does, it doesn't actually look that bad, in my opinion, when it comes to the tank actually being put together. So, uh, we'll move away from Daily Bop's hated um, colour and we'll move on to a nicer colour on the actual device, just so we can pop this up here. this over here, we'll pop this here, we'll slide this out, pop this video down as well bit. So there we go. So that's a nicer colour to the actual tank itself. I don't like the I don't like the uh, the colour of the kind of ultimate drip tip and all but um essentially that's a nicer colour you know you can see they're going down the route of uh, a bit like smock and they're also going down the route of um well so yeah sorry i mean they're going down the route of smock when it comes to the drip tip yeah it looks like a pretty nice a pretty nice um rta or rd I, I don't understand why they call it an rda because essentially it looks more like an RTA to me than an RDA, just for the way it looks, you know. Uh, yeah. See, that's the thing, I was 50 50 in it as well. Uh, DS. Because I like the concept, it looks like an interesting concept. I like the design of the tank. But I don't know where the concept to it is actually going to stick up to uh, the to the claims they're putting on whether it's going to be sufficient and it's going to last a million puffs and it's going to be self clean and all or whether it's going to go down the route of that kind of ceramic one where they say oh it's self clean, clean and then after a day's use you find that the actual plates are stained and you know when you kind of dry fire it, you kind of burn it off and self clean it, it's not going to clean. Because that's essentially what happened with the last one there. Uh, you were having people saying, yeah, it's about to be self clean, I'm firing it to try to, to clean it and all, but it's kind of making it look more murky just by applying uh, a bit of heat to it. But what we'll do, we'll have a quick look at the information for it. So we are. So I'll pop this into chat again for anyone who wants to have a look at it. I will go through a quick bit of information on the RFC, uh, the Rift Core Duo RDA. So they're saying, uh, I don't understand why they're calling it RDA because essentially. Uh, it, it is a tank, but they're calling it the Joytech RFC Riftcore Dual RDA Tank Atomizer. So it's an RDA tank. That's not an RDA tank, that's an RTA. So that there is no, as far as I'm aware, there's no such thing as an RDA tank because the way it's working is 
uh, when you have your liquid in there, you're not going to be able to pop a top off and drip on top of it. It's an RTA, not an RDA. Uh, yeah, they're saying that it's using an innovative coilless building deck design for easy operation. Uh, the heating elements feature a rectangle chip design with several fountain holes and is made from a special metallic material to offer vapors the best uh, e-juice flavors. Uh, it also supports self-clean to protect the RDA from damage and offers you a long-lasting awesome flavor. Uh, they're saying it approves 1 million puff lifespan and the honeycomb drip tip uh, with a fashion design uh, on the top there with the bottom airflow for larger vapor. So the only information that I can see there is not a lot of information in regards to uh, the dimensions of it, but the only information is essentially the stuff that I've just talked about there. Uh, and I'm not going to go through it again. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the packaging you only get at the minute, say the only packaging you only get the RDA in it as well. But it's not; it hasn't been released yet. It's due to be released. Particularly uh, soon down the line, but I'm pretty sure sooner down the line it'll come up with a bit more information. I couldn't even find it on uh, Joytech's website there because I had a quick look to see if I could find it on Joytech's website and it hasn't come up. So, RFC. Yeah, no results in the, on the Joytech website. Yeah, so essentially it's still relatively new to the news, relatively new to the market at all. But yeah, um, what is your thoughts on the RFC? Because mine, I, I basically told you mine. Yeah, get them while they're only a penny. So. No, I'm not exactly sure if the actual price was going to come out, but I'm, I'm hoping when it comes to Joy Tech um, items, Joy Tech items are not usually the most expensive stuff, so it'll be reasonably priced uh, when it actually does come out. But yeah, uh, that is the RFC Ref Core Duo uh, RDA Tank. RTA. That is it basically, yeah. It's pretty pretty nice looking thing. So this So what we'll do is we'll pop this out. We'll pop the chat back in well not the chat, we'll pop the window back in or expand the window. And then we'll just sit down and have a nice wee break in between because rather than have a bit of news, you just have a wee bit of a chat up. So, transition. There we go. So, we'll have a look back at the chat and see what I've missed on the chat. Uh, so, yeah, what were we saying? I think I saw it during a week. It's like $39.99 for it on pre order. Ooh. So, what's that $39.99? $39 what would that, what that be about $34? £30, Somewhere around the thirty pound mark. What's for an RDA is it's not a bad kind of price for yeah, but thirty two pound yeah, thirty two pounds. Thank you, guy. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad price when you think about. It. But what I would do. I would wait out and see if some of the bigger reviewers get it and see what their thoughts on it is because essentially what you you don't want to get the actual device or the actual RDA in this case and um, find it you're not getting a, a good experience out of it so I'll wait until the actual reviews come out before I actually make a decision whether I'm going to buy it or not. But yeah, it does seem 29, 29 pounds and 65 pence 
Whip, that is a pretty good price. So that is a pretty good price on that. So, hold on, you just give me one second here so I can shut this dog up. Oh no, someone's done it. Okay, yay. So yeah, um, yeah, tw twenty nine sixty five. It's a pretty, pretty decent price for it. You know, as I said, yeah, I'll wait for the reviews. Wait to see what what, uh, what the reviewers talk about. Yeah, you can hear you can hear the doggy. Uh, the doggy doesn't want the doesn't want to be quiet today for some reason. So that uh, he's the he's the bane. He's the bane of my life. So the amount of takes I have had to cancel or the amount of takes that I've had to do because he keeps barking in between is annoying so that literally I'm having to go back every once in a while through the takes I have done and delete them because it's taken up space in my computer and I really need the space in my computer to keep it running sweet and smooth but yeah, that is my lovely doggy there. Uh, it is a Labrador Retriever. It's a five-year-old Labrador Retriever male, so it's a bit of a boisterous boy. Uh, yeah, yeah, he knows I'm on camera. So, so every time I go in front of a camera, he's barking like mad and all. So, so that what I would like to do. So from time to time is when I do try to record stuff, especially if it's during the day, I'll probably pop him outside in the back garden there to dance around a bit and you know kind of relax himself down. But when it comes to later times when I do reviews later on, like say I come back from work, I say right, okay, I'm gonna sit down, gonna get this review out. So that I'll take him out for a wee walk, take him a wee uh, like 15, 20 minute walk. Usually he puffs him out so when he comes back in he lies down, falls asleep and then I can just go ahead and get the refuse out of the way. But you can never tell when he's going to bark or when he's not going to bark. So because you think you can hear something like he's going to start barking and then all of a sudden he doesn't bark. Then you start talking and then suddenly you hear row, 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 row. I said, ah, click outside, walk back, fall asleep. Yeah, nice sweet Labrador Retriever, um, five year old, the wee black Labrador Retriever. So he's uh, so he's a, he's a nice wee guy, very boisterous, uh, just very, very um, interesting to that to have around the house. <laughs> so, it's, but yeah, you'll never be even going mad though. <laughs> so. Anyway, there has been a couple of uh, a couple of reviews I laughed at. Well, I've been laughing at this week. One of them is from you know a bit of a well, I wouldn't say controversial. Well, I'd say a bit of a loud outgoing review. So essentially, well, he he was sent uh, a pipe by. Was a Camry Tech, and so he decided that he was gonna sick sell tape around the top of his hat, put on a fake moustache, and try to start talking about. But every time he saw himself on the camera, he started laughing like mad. So that uh, you know, it was very interesting to watch because it went from like a ten minute review to a twenty twenty four minute review. Because every take he was taking, uh. He, he was catching himself in the camera and he was laughing like mad. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I watched, uh, I, I came across this video, so that I, I don't really like to watch this video, but I came across it. I saw the, the thumb tag was him with sellotape around the hat and a fake moustache on. I said, this must be. I have to sit down and watch this video and see what the hell is happening in this video. But as soon as I watch that, it acts, yeah, get, yeah, him, yeah, him, guys. So that, as I say, I don't, I don't usually watch his videos, but it kind of caught my interest to thumbnail or not. 
So I thought, right, I'll sit down, I'll have a quick look at that, but I end up laughing, laughing the whole way through the chapter, uh, the whole way through the video, which um, I don't usually do when it comes to his videos because he's very, uh, very ab abrupt with some of his stuff. So it's um. So he kind of does put me off from time to time when it comes to watching some of the trees because he's very abrupt. So there, but you know, people he has his fans, so people like him for that and all that. But for me, he's just very abrupt. But yeah, uh, while we are here, we'll have a look at the next article in in the actual uh well the la this is the last one the last device that i've seen uh that is kind of interesting to me and uh, is from our favorite company on the market yeah you understand what we're talking about we're having a look at the smock exports Essentially, with the up and coming addition of a lot of pod systems, I thought this one looks pretty interesting. And it's not, it's not overly hideous in the design. It actually does look a, like a pretty decent design, and possibly something that uh, would be picked up myself. But yeah. This is the Smock X Force uh, pod system from the guys at Smock Tech. So yeah, everyone's favorite uh, company, Smock Tech. So Smock Tech X Force device. As you can see, there it's not the most abruptly bad shaped device. Uh, it does look like it's going to be pretty convenient in the hand. So, and that's the that's the six colours that it comes in. So it comes in, comes in black, comes in red, comes in white, yellow, blue, uh, purple. Uh, essentially, in the box you get yourself the X Force board. You get the X Force tank or pod, as I call, it, uh, which is refillable. So there, you get the X Force uh, coil. Which is a 0.3 ohm coil. Of course, it's smock tech. They're going to put stupid, stupid ohmage coils into it. Uh, you're going to have a spur X Force coil, which is 0.3 ohms. You're going to have uh, your USB charge cable and a user manual. But to me, it doesn't it doesn't exactly look like the most over the top, bad shaped. But look at the face, it actually does look like a pretty nice device from Smock. That said, something you know, essentially, they have gone down the route of making pretty good devices these days. Uh, you know, especially from the likes of the Pro Color. They've changed the board and it made it look a lot better. Made, made it look a lot more uh, convenient, a lot more easier to use. So the, a lot more attractive on the screen. But yeah, quick bit of rundown for it. So it's made out of uh, PC. The weight in it is 99.8 grams. A height of 102.5 millimeters. With a width of 52 millimeters and a depth of 30.4. Uh, uh, wattage rate of the power range is... It's below 45 watts uh, input voltage 3.3 volts to 4.2 uh, battery capacity is 2000 milliamps which is pretty good for a pod system when you think about it, you know 2000 milliamp battery in a pod system standby current of less than 200 uh, amps uh, charging voltage 5 volts and charging current of 0.6 amps to 0.7 amps uh, for the U-Force tank itself, or the pod, 
Uh, there's two different options. You have your standard option, which uh, outside of the EU will hold seven milliliters of juice. Inside the EU, it has to stick with TBD regulations, so two mils of juice. Uh, height of it is 52 millimeters by 30.3 millimeters in diameter. Uh, do, 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 do. The weight of it is like 36 grams. I'm pretty sure there is a way. I haven't really had a look, a proper close in look at the actual port, but I'm hoping that there is a way that you could try to remove the inner diameter or something got to make it a slightly bigger capacity on it. But yeah, um, it's pretty, pretty interesting kind of port system. What? Yeah, it's smock. I like to look at the design of it, but it's smock, so they put a stupid orbit coil into it. The milliamp bar on it, of course, is going to be two thousand. As they say, it's two thousand milliamp bars. So you're gonna get, you're gonna go essentially around, or slightly less. Uh, the time which you'll get from a standard kind of stick pod system uh, which is kind of a downer you know it's just the way SWAT go uh, when it comes to their stuff oh we have Mr. Elitiston so how many Yeehe mods do you have now? No I know you got yourself a special Yeehe mod this morning the black and gold was it? The black and gold uh, 200. So that, I, I like to look it up. You got three now. Three now. Flap in hell. I thought Fick was bad. No, 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 Fick, no, no, you and Fick are basically on the same kind of, kind of table, because, what, what does he have? He has, he has two of the G classes. I don't know if he still has a T class, but I think he has one T class. So he's walking, he's sitting in his bedroom or with three SX mods uh, in the on the shelves, so yeah, it looks like you're around about the same amount. You know the SX mods. So I think I think that's right. You're sitting free. Feck will probably be sitting with free. So one auto fires. Have, have we not sent that back to you here yet? Yeah, you should have, if you bought it at full price, you should have a, they give you a lifetime warranty, don't you? So, um, on your mods. Ah, uh, don't. Get it, I'd say rubbish for your stuff. Get it sorted, so that, yeah, send that back, because that is far too much money just to leave it sitting around, you know, for, for a device that is really good, and it's just going to sit there and auto fire on you, no, it's not, it's not, that's not right, you need to get that sorted as soon as possible, please, and thank you. Yeah, well... Yeah, do with Foxy's. Contact him and see if there's any way you can try to do it that way. Because uh, essentially, even even though you probably bought like a while down there, they do give you a lifetime warranty on it. As long as you can prove by email. Say you bought from a website, you can prove that you bought at a certain price. And if you look back through your emails, you might be able to have proof of where you bought uh, of how much you pay for it. Uh, 
Dus jij dacht ik geen contact en jij dacht ik geen contact met hem no, because ah, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure they'll happily fix it for you. And if they don't fix it, then you know I'm pretty sure we could probably get uh, Jay to have a look at it. I know Jay is. He really wants to get his hands and to have a look at the internals on an SX mod. That could work as well. That could work as well, yeah. Uh, if they can't fix it, then how did the Fick can see if um, Fick can get a fix for you? Then essentially, he can send it back down to you uh, if they do fix it. Yeah, it'll be in your PayPal history. So if you pay by PayPal, or even if you bought from a website, you know they'll have they'll have um, a receipt that's been sent out to you, like an email receipt that's sent out to you, or even uh, if you go on to certain websites where you have an account. You can look back at the account history of your recent your recent purchases, and it'll tell you the amount that you bought it up. Essentially, if they do ask for uh, any, yeah, account purchases for sure. Yeah, if they do ask for any evidence, you can show evidence in regards to like a screenshot of the account purchase uh the email that will probably really set out to you if you bought it from the likes of evolution vaping or something like that um, they would have sent you an email with it for notification of payment or notification of payment and shipping plus they have an account history on their website you can go Go back and have a look at that. Uh, you can even have a look at the PayPal and you can look back at the date that you bought or the read about the date you bought and you can see uh, evidence of how much you paid and where you bought it from and all. See, that's the safest way to go, eh, if you see, through PayPal. So that, because essentially, if something goes wrong, you can always put in a PayPal speak and hopefully get your money back. Uh, but I've started buying most of my stuff from the likes of... Um, of course, you buy from the likes of Fapen 101 and all that, and Evolution Fapen and all. But um, there are some pretty decent deals on Amazon at the minute. So some, some of the prices on some of the kits are pretty good. Uh, I know I got I got a tank once from him. I don't remember what tank it was. Um, I think it was something like the I think it was the Kensai that I got on on uh, Amazon. That's a genuine Kensai. It came in the packaging and all. It came from a rapid little seller and all. Plus. If you do have a problem with uh, items not being shipped out and all, you can put a, uh, a dispute in with Amazon and it'll take a lot faster for them to uh, to sort out the problem than it would be going for eBay because eBay essentially they'll tell you, oh, get in contact with the seller first. And then if you don't get in contact with the seller after a couple of days, they'll come back to this and start an eBay dispute that way. Amazon, most of the time, uh, if they have Prime on it, or Amazon Prime option, you're getting it from Amazon itself. Yeah, I, I, I understand eBay are now ending off vape sales and all that, but you'll still see a couple slipping through. It's just the way it goes. Because they, ba they can ban the stuff, but you'll see you'll still see a couple of seals going through, especially if it just put them in like 24 hours or something.
And I am sitting on my wallet, which is really hurting my backside at the moment. So I'm going to have to readjust myself and keep my wallet in my back pocket. Ah! Thick wallet. Sticking in the, sticking in the back of my leg here. Well, I think I may have enough money in there to buy myself a, a Yee mod if I want. Just how thick that thing is. It's in the water. Yeah, it's the safest place, you know. The safest place to be underneath, uh, underneath the leg, right between the butt cheeks. So essentially, no one wants to go down there and try to take my money from around about where my butt cheeks is. So, so it's the safest place for it to be. But yeah, um. What are we sitting on? We're sitting on uh, 10 past 9 at the moment. <laughs> so, AVC, was it, um, was it Fong Tai? Or did she say she wanted to go and do the shopping for this week and you still haven't got your wallet back? So I just catch up and chat here. So essentially, what am I missing? I said about a couple of interesting RDAs coming out in a while. I know you're not bad on Iron Wall because you just bought the 80 watt, uh, Pulse 80 watt. No, you just got the Pulse 80 watt there. Um, how how is that going? Because I'm hearing that there is a number of cases where people are saying that they're only getting like an hour or two hours out of the batteries in the Pulse 80 watt. Or uh, sorry, like an hour or an hour. Yeah, what's a battery life like? Because I'm hearing cases of people getting an hour to two hours out of a battery uh, in the actual mod itself. In the in the Pulse eighty what? Well, that, that's the thing. I'm hearing cases in regards to that, so um, so I would like this. I'd like to hear whether you're getting a decent amount of battery life out of it, or whether it is a bit of a problem. Uh, time to change it up. We'll go from one smack to an eye joy. Yeah, yeah. Kind of forgot about that. You do, you do vape the lower wattage, so you do get a good amount more time uh, out of your batteries because you're not really draining much of the batteries up. Sure. But now, right, once I've done filling this VCMT2 tank, uh, because it's drank with my juice like mad, we'll move on to the main topic that I really want to talk about this week. And it is uh, related to the latest news and the latest um, information that is coming out from channels being erased on YouTube. So I found this article on vaping360.com. Uh, it's a very interesting article and it does have a number of uh, links in it, uh, videos in it in regards to a bit of background information uh, on YouTube and the way it's going there. So that is the link to Faping 360's website. Uh, the name of the article is Is YouTube Erasing Faping History? Uh, 
talks I believe, so I don't get hit by Gwen for saying history. Yeah, so, tagline, YouTube, is YouTube erasing vaping history? Is it time to start looking seriously at moving vaping content away from the mega corporate media sites? So, this one, essentially, uh, the information on is they're talking uh, in regards to vaping YouTubers getting strikes in regards to certain content. Uh, so, you have uh, information so in regards to what's happening in the background of having interviews with certain companies and all that, and uh, certain statements and all. So, Vaping YouTube. Oh. Alright, it's nice to see uh, Big Dripper we'll catch up earlier. So, yeah, Vaping YouTube has been rattled by the recent action taken against content creators. So, long time product reviewers like uh, Ruby Roo, uh, Tear Vapes. Uh, Ren Hall have all received strikes and no one is sure why. So uh, essentially they were saying the general belief was that uh, YouTube was targeting uh, content in regards to the dual kind of pod system. Uh, they're saying that the recent attacks on those were on, on the actual system itself was uh, by politicians and anti-tobacco groups and the company stated willingly that they will help eliminate youth uh, dual use. So um, they, pointed to, they pointed to it as a driving factor towards the YouTube crackdown. Uh, some papers also believe that Jill was working with YouTube to cleanse the site of the content. But uh, essentially, the statement from uh, Dual Labs is that they are not responsible. Their statement is that uh, we only request the removal of content that targets youth audiences and advocates of illegal activity. Uh, so, uh, it doesn't explain uh, the actions around Ruby Roo and you know, all that, you know, because essentially uh, she's been around since before this whole system came out. She's been around YouTube since the whole system came out, uh, and she's on like 85,000 followers. So uh, she's certainly not a teenager, she's certainly not creating youth oriented videos. Uh, essentially, it goes on to say. It's been, YouTube has been handing out strikes left and right for fake reviews on the system. Uh, they're saying that last week on Instagram, uh, Ruby Roo, last week on Instagram, saying that today I had to delete three videos, one of which was my most viewed video ever. To see all my hard work being thrown out makes me feel sick. Fake channels are being targeted by YouTube. All I want to do is help people not to smoke and to put food on my table. Why does it have to be this way? So apparently uh, she goes on to say, um, well, Greg Green goes on to say, YouTube does not believe in the First Amendment uh, in regards to a picture that I'm going to put up here. Uh, so this picture I'm going to put up is the Instagram post from Graham Greens page. So we'll move this out of the way. I will put up the picture from the Instagram feed, which is this one here. So we'll pop this down a small bit. I'll pop it in there. So yeah, this is the picture <clears throat> from the Instagram feed of uh, Green Green. So essentially, as I was saying, he says that YouTube does not believe in the First Amendment. Uh, and it shows the Instagram meme showing that uh, Ruby and Green Green 
are being gagged by the YouTube logo. For the first time ever, I'm genuinely worried. Uh, Green wrote in the post, this is not an exaggeration. So, uh, they go on to talk about commu the community guidelines for YouTube. So they're saying that uh, the community guidelines describe content that is prohibited on the platform, that the guidelines are flexible enough to be applied to almost any video and it leaves content producers guessing about what they can or cannot do on their own channels and YouTube doesn't really explain the actions uh, they said that anyone can report a video for some perceived violation of the guidelines so tobacco control interns could be reporting every single dual video on YouTube as it may be uh, and there are still some who actually uh, who are, there are still some actual youth videos out there that have been untouched on the site but you know um sorry go back we'll go back there is still a lot of actual youth videos untouched on the website but it seems but that seems unlikely that the, the tobacco control interns are going around reporting all the videos uh it says it looks like uh youtube is looking at its own content too uh, they have bots that monitor the site constantly looking for violations. Uh, where the bricks are rules and when the AI thinks the bricks are rules it gives it a strike. And YouTube goes on a free strike um, policy. So quickly take you through each of the strikes as I say there. So the first strike means that some of your features that the content creators use like the ability to live stream will be disabled. Uh, it will last three months and it expires unless the channel receives another strike during that time. Uh, there is an appeal process, but the appeal may be delayed for no explanation. And if the appeal is delayed, the channel loses the right to appeal future strikes for 60 days. Uh, if you get a second strike issued during the three month period, the right to post new videos is suspended for two weeks. After that, full privileges uh, are restored, but the strikes remain on each separate three month uh, period until it expires. Uh, if you get a third strike within the three months, uh, sorry, the third strike within a three month period that begins with the first strike means YouTube death, your account's terminated. Uh, and then it goes on with lovely. Um, picture of Miss Red Fox URLs so essentially they have took a a link from Red Fox's um, uh, Twitter page and essentially just saying the, the custom URLs are so yeah as you can see there um, Vapetube, yeah, well, Vapetube, it's, uh, it's essentially, it's an alternative to YouTube, it's not as big as YouTube as far as I'm aware, but Vapetube is like a, it's a separate place where you can post up fake videos, and it's mainly kind of fake video videos, isn't it? So I'm, I'm assuming you have to you have to um, pay for your content to be on it. Sorry, not pay for your content. You have to pay for some kind of subscription fee for it. Because I don't think Vapetube will be as big in the server space as is it free. So no, I, I don't know in regards to the way Femio, they use uh, a subscription per month. So you can have a certain amount of uh, memory or a certain amount of space that you can put your videos up onto. Uh, I was thinking Vapetube would be like that because it's not they're not as big as YouTube, so they aren't. Um, they're more kind of a uh, like more fat based, so they'll be smaller and probably have smaller servers as well. But yeah, it does seem it does seem like pretty good. I have seen a couple of big big YouTubers all 
but I, I don't know whether there would be much um, much interest for smaller YouTube, smaller fake reviews and put their stuff up in there. You know, it would be good. It would be, I could understand it would be better, you know, because you're basically surrounded by other fake related videos and it's a fake related platform. But uh, essentially you're going to see most people are going to go on they're going to have a look at the bigger YouTuber videos and then uh, smaller YouTubers who might struggle a bit more because they're not getting um, they're not getting as much traffic as what they would be getting with the likes of YouTube that we're on right now. Well, yeah, we'll continue on with the Fit360 post. Uh, essentially, we're talking about the demonetizing Fit content uh, after the FDA's 2016 demon rules. Uh, they go on to talk about an article by Abby Phipps last month where she describes the migration to the gaming site Twitch. So people are starting to post up their videos on Twitch. Which uh, I don't know if they're gonna get many, many uh, people watching their stuff on Twitch because it's more kind of game oriented. But the most interesting thing, in my opinion, is uh, this link here. This video that's on the page, but I'll put a link to the actual uh, video itself. It's pretty interesting. It, it goes on for about twenty minutes. But uh, it's mainly it's mainly a rundown on the the uh, the ratings that YouTube do. You know, you won't see, you won't really see the ratings uh, on the videos. You know that you know, you know the way you go to the movies. You can have uh, you can have a look and see, or if you. Have a look at the back of the DVD box. You can see written like um, rated for mature or rated for kids or something like that. So there's something in the background to YouTube apparently that is going down that route as well. But yeah, the the uh, the name of that video is Ready Air for Mature YouTube's Secret Rating System Exposed. So it's a pretty interesting watch if you uh, sit down and watch it. It's like a, as I say, it's like a twenty minute long kind of video uh, where essentially they just talk about uh, the hidden ratings in the background there. Then you have other videos like Chill Out YouTube, uh, another. I wouldn't really call them more of a. I would fear, in my opinion, just call them more of a kind of promoter uh, down there, but. He, Show out YouTube and then at the bottom there you have your poll and all. But yeah, um, it's pretty interesting stuff there. It's, it, it's really something that needs to be talked about. Because there has been a hell of a lot of controversy on YouTube in regards to this uh, this kind of topic and it's really something that you know needs a bit more of in-depth talk so why not have it on a live show where people can debate it and essentially rather than having a one-sided story you can have a lot of people debating you can have a lot of different opinions happen at the same time so it's probably the best place to actually sit down and have a wee chat about it. but i missed out on a bit of the chat there so i'm gonna have to go back and have a look at the chat there so what am I missing? So ba 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 ba. Yeah, well, um, we're looking back there. Since when has the jewel been a youth product? Uh, they're just pandering to money from advertisers. Yeah, it's exactly. So it's it's not advertised as being a child product or a child oriented product or a child attract well they're not advertising as a child attractive product or something for so for someone uh, youth to use 
essentially it's stupid people the likes of Dolly Smokes who are going out around and saying oh yeah this is how you hide your e-cigarette in school so you can use it in school no no do not do that it's stupid and you, you're going to get in so much trouble if you are caught but yeah all these promoters and people going around talking about Jewel being a youth oriented product or a youth attractive product no, they are just trying to pander so that that's, no, no, hold on Hold on, um, hold on, wait, as far as I'm aware, I know his channel was shut down, but as far as I'm aware, I thought he opened the second channel, a backup channel, or is that backup channel being brought down as well, because that's gone too, so essentially he's totally gone, thank you, the amount of, the amount of stuff, Stuff he was putting on his channel, very questionable stuff. Uh, it's really good to see that uh, you could you could complain about YouTube deleting videos and deleting channels, especially when it comes to Yule, the the, the dual products and all that, and stuff that are, that uh, advertisers or uh, the bots are picking up as kind of child oriented or kind of mixed towards that. But you have to. Be thankful that the bots are going around and closing down channels like that. So that because he was given a bad, a really bad uh, opinion for anyone who came across his videos, uh, you know, causing a hell of a lot of bad impressions on the Fapin community as a whole and on the Fapin refu. Uh, um, the Fapin uh, commu community as a whole. Uh, I know he went round and he said in a massive post, Oh no, I am not a Fapin reviewer. Mate, you're getting stuff from companies. Companies are sending you out stuff, including pods and flavours, and you're videoing them and you're giving your opinions on it. In my opinion, that is a review. Even though you're sitting in a car and it's not in a professional space, I guess, or you're set up with a background or something like that, or you're set up with big massive mod, right, the mods behind you, you're sitting in a car, you're giving your opinions on a liquid or you're giving your opinions on a piece of hardware, that is a fate with you. That is nothing other than a fate with you. He can turn around, he can say all he wants, oh, it's my opinion, and just doing a video on my opinion. No, you just did a review, mate. You give your opinions, you give your pros and your cons on the actual device. That is a review. That is not your opinion video. If it was your opinion video, you would just essentially do what a lot of people do with a first look. You would kind of pull it out and go, oh yeah, I like, the, I like the shape of it. I like the way it kind of have a couple of... Oh yeah, I like the way it kind of vapes. But rather than having it for a couple of days and giving your own opinion on it. Yeah, it's... That is a fate with you, mate. Not for another day of fate with you. And um, you have to have to be thankful for YouTube going out and their bots shutting down channels like that who are giving bad impressions uh, to people who are new to faping or looking again to faping and protecting well, protecting the kids from uh, getting their hands on uh, electronic cigarettes or hiding electronic cigarettes in uh, their pencil cases or in their pockets trying to go into school. Mind you, you go from the likes of um, Jewel to that particular device that... Um, uh, the Ficket got in the other day, the one that looks a hell of a lot like a pen. 
So I'm trying to remember which one is a thick guy then, but he, he had it on his WhatsApp. Or his WhatsApp, sorry. He was like, um... Yeah, they brought it at the right, around about the wrong time. So they were... But it looks a hell of a lot like a pen. You know, kind of pop a top off. You have access to your actual... Uh, device itself, where you can vape on. But yeah. That may be the next thing they'll probably go after, you know, especially with the way the shape it looks like. And that, or they'll probably go down the route and start going crazy on that particular mod that looks like uh, lipstick. So there's, but yeah, they'll find something else to go on to. I'm pretty sure they'll find something else to go on to. You'll find probably somewhere down the line they'll move away from uh, Jewel and they'll move on to a particular uh, a different particular kind of um, device. It's good. It's it's bound to happen. So it's, it's something that's going to happen, but I, I can't exactly remember what uh the name of that device is and if anyone does remember the name of the, the device from his what from his whatsapp please put it into the uh comments box here because it'd be greatly appreciated to know the name of the actual device but while we're doing that we'll move on to the we'll move on to the next very uh possibly but they made the time we're talking about is probably the last one. Uh, recently in the news, or recently over in New Zealand, there has been uh, a pretty good. Um, there's been a pretty good bit of news in regards to New Zealand. So, this is the link to the Planet of the Fapes uh, website that we're looking at. And the logo, uh, the name of the article is Faping Now Fully Legal in New Zealand. And, hello, Kerka, how's it going? So, yeah. So, yeah, as we're saying, we're having a look at um, this article here. Uh, the article name is Fapping now fully legal in New Zealand. So that is a really good, really good news to hear from it. So that... No, 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 no. No, 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 no. So yeah, um... Quick bit of information on this. Uh, it's been a court case. Uh, has been brought forward to face the force of the issue. But New Zealand has now recognised that vaping does not fall under smoke-free legislation and is now legal to use nicotine-containing liquids w across the country. So, some are even saying that vaping will help the country become smoke-free by 2025. So, Dr. Atella Danko, the former president of the New Nicotine Alliance, Australia welcomed the news. He said the nicotine vaping is now fully legal as a consumer product in New Zealand and smoke free rules don't apply. The thing is, it always was and needed a. Sorry, the thing is, it always was, but they needed a court challenge to confirm it. So, uh, Ben Foreman, who is a Australian reading top on TV and radio journalist who hosts debates and current affair broadcast. He said that the move put massive pressure on the health ministers in Australia to change the law. Uh, essentially, what he said was the tidal wave of change is moving closer to Australia. So, from the sounds of things, if New Zealand, uh, now that New Zealand have gone uh faping friendly the push is on for Australia to become faith friendly as well basically because we're so close 
when it comes to uh, talks a lot about how it really close to it comes to communications, they'll probably try to push on a bit of evidence to the Australian uh, market and or the Australian government and try to get a bit of the issue onto the actual Australian government in regards to getting Australia faith friendly. So, uh, essentially, we're just talking most of it, just talking about in regards to evidence and all. Uh, yeah. The last statement, the really important statement there. So, there's a. Uh, in New Zealand, they've recognised that these products should be encouraged to help smokers quit. In Australia, we're making it as hard as possible. And these products are so much less harmful for people who who can't quit. They are lifesavers. So that's coming from Colin Mendelson, who is a tobacco treatment specialist and associate professor at the School of Public Health and Community Medicine in the University of New South Wales. Uh, he basically, um, apart from that, he said the start there, he went on to say that it's exciting and New Zealand, so it's very exciting and New Zealand have trampled or, tr or trumped us once again. It is a very sensible change and they recognise that the product is so much safer than smoking and should be treated separately. But yeah, that is really, really good news for New Zealand and hopefully it does pass on to um, Australia in regards to becoming vape friendly. But yeah, we'll catch up in the chat here again since um, Miss Carica has come in. Let's see what, what I've... Um, See what I've missed here. So what have I missed? Um, blah, 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 blah. You say them would have me have no trade certification. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we've gone, we've got the whole way down to um. No, 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 they, they can troll you as long as they want. I'm just trying to catch up with the chat here. But uh, it, it looks like it's gone down the whole troll in New Zealand route, which is pretty funny. So it's pretty, pretty, um, pretty funny as well. But yeah, that is really good news for New Zealand. You know, essentially, uh, if Australia can continue down the same route that New Zealand have gone, uh, you'll find that it'll be a lot easier for you to buy your stuff if you do live over in Australia it'd be a hell of a lot easier to buy your stuff you'd have the likes of Sam Fippenbogen who would have a bit more freedom in regards to the liquids that he can do or the liquids that he can buy without going out of his way well I'm pretty sure it's Sam he's on the side where he can buy the nic he can buy the nicotine easily you know that but say he lived in your side of the island and all, um, he can happily walk into the shop, buy flavours, uh, the particular flavour he wants to buy the nicotine, you know, it's a lot easier to buy, rather than getting the nicotine imported in. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty, um, pretty good news for there. So... And we still have like 15 minutes to go. I thought, I thought this last article would go on for a bit longer, but just in the off chance, I do actually have one more, um, one more bit of information or one more kind of wee, wee chat article. In it. And uh, essentially, this is going to be the most controversial one just because I do not like the whole labeling on this. So we'll go into the chat here. 
uh, and we'll have this page ready so that we can essentially show you the pictures uh, or whether you want the pictures put up but we're talking about oh, lost it there. we're talking about this article here so the name of the article is more FDA warning letters so there has been a bit of a talk recently uh, especially amongst uh, a couple of the more uh, the more um well, thank you, Karaka. Yeah, uh, to more to the more um kind of interested people. Uh, there has been a number of FDA letters that, that were sent out in regards to questionable packagings, and uh, there has uh, there has been more warning letters that have been sent out to certain companies. So um yeah. If you have a look at this page here, essentially the American Food and Drug Administration it continues to wage its attack on e-liquid manufacturers and bring the total number of juice makers into the spotlight to 17. So four more firms now stand accused of using product designs to make their products look like child-friendly food products. So uh, essentially we shall have a quick look at each of these uh, pictures and let's hear your opinion on each of these. So we'll start off with uh, this one here, which is, they're calling it Unicorn Cakes. Oh, that's, that's, there we go. So yes, this is the first um, one they're calling Unicorn Cakes. Essentially what it's going to be, it's going to be the labelling of the actual um, flavour and then what the FDA are saying that it is equivalent to. So Unicorn Cakes, they're saying uh, that the equivalent to that is basically kind of you know, cartoon unicorns. Uh, you know, and they're saying that is very child uh oriented stuff which i do actually can't believe kind of think it is because it is very bright colorful it's really something that the company should be doing but what is your opinions on this particular flavor because i do not believe that this i should have that there so unicorn cakes we have So this is just an example of three of them. So there. So we have unicorn cakes. Uh, we have Franken Frankenfip. So we have Frankenfip here, and we are going to add in the last one, which is. It's the one that I really thought that they should have picked up earlier because essentially, if we, you think you would have picked it up earlier, and it's the one that um, uh, there was a lot of controversy over on Bip, uh, Rip Chipper's page. So yeah, that is the three things that they are talking about in regards to. Uh, labeling so there so uh you have the unicorn yeah he just sent me a five bullet one okay yeah yeah i seen it in the chat i seen it in the chat so it's nice of uh, Mr. Summerfield to send me a nice wee message out about Yeah, I've seen the chat and I've seen that we have five minutes left of the show. But yeah, we'll, qu we'll continue ahead, just quickly have a wee chat with us. Uh, there, what, there was no uh, kind of um, poll this week because I couldn't really think of one. And I was too busy too, but essentially it's just more interesting in the news. But yeah, what is your interest in, 
what is your opinion on these? Because, in my opinion, uh, that unicorn cake spawn is very child oriented and it should not be around in the first place. Uh, the Franken Skull one, I question whether, and, or the Franken Fate one, sorry, I question whether they are just going a bit crazy. I know it's bright and colourful and oriented and all that, but they're trying to say the Franken Fate looks a lot like the Franken Barry, which the label is slightly different, the colour is slightly different. I wouldn't really think that would be. Franken Barry, but I don't understand what they're talking about in regards to child oriented kind of flavorings or child oriented kind of labeling. Sorry, uh, and then the last one there, the one that Mr. Uh, Rip Trippers himself got the controversy over. Essentially, um, I believe they made a change that I don't know why they're still using those tins, but of course, with the tin there, it looks like a, a food imitation kind of product and all that. Uh, the, the likes of uh, this is standard soda drink but yeah it's um yeah I could understand the first one looking very similar but the first one looking very similar it's uh, the one at the top corner there or the first one I showed you here, the the kind of rainbow ones because or the, the unicorn ones because the unicorn ones uh they're trying to say that um Uh, the, 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 the one that the, the, the unicorn wants to trying to say it looks like the unicorn kind of cartoons rather than something kind of food imitation-y. So, uh, but um, I can understand that last one there. It looks like a tin of soda pop. I can understand them talking in, in regards to food imitation act. Uh, you know, it looks like a bottle of, or ten of Fanta or something or a ten of uh, as I say to have that kind of fruit juice there. But I am still kinda of questioning the fact of it, but I do understand that the labeling on it does look um uh very child oriented and very bright and cover and all but I don't actually see where the hell they're talking about in regards to uh the Flavor looking like freaking by. So, but that's just my opinion. If you if if you find that uh, looks kind of does look like it in your opinion, you know you can go ahead and have uh, we we look at the actual article itself. So yeah, I'll post in this wee article one last time, and you can have a look at it there for anyone who came in last minute. I just want to give a. Thank you for everyone who has come in to watch the show tonight. Uh, it's greatly appreciated you've joined me. As you can see, I'm here by myself again. But we have had a really fun two hours. Uh, we had a, a good amount of stuff. And if Miss Kirk uh, came in earlier in the day, we would have seen some very interesting items uh, that may be right up her alley. So, yes, yeah, she's going to have to go and have a look back at the replay of the... Um, well, if you were watching the show, you would have seen a couple of products. You'll have to have a look back at the replay in regards to the products because there are some pretty interesting products. But yeah, guys, I'm going to go here and uh, you can all get ready for Mr. Chuckmeister, who's going to be on in five minutes. So a big massive thank you for joining the show. And yeah, I have had so much fun today. A lot of fun. So we shall prepare to go to the screen and I'm going to give you a thank you for coming and have a good night and faith on.